with Lisa Lo Cicero and Molly Kurth. What amazing scenes you guys we just saw play out in General Hospital. It was so great. I want to talk all about it. But first, Wally, how does it feel now to finally put Eddie a bit behind you <laughs> and back into Ned? Are you happy, not happy? <laughs> Are you out with it? Oh, no, no. I'm happy. I'm very happy. You know, my biggest fear was landing this amnesia storyline. And after watching it today in the water and all of that, I feel like we landed it. You know, it was really sweet and magical. And, and it, it, it was, it was, it, 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 we, I think we succeeded. So I'm happy about how it turned out. So no, you know, now, you know, on soaps, it's onward and, and upward. You just keep moving. And so now I'm back in the suit and tie and back to being Ned. And, uh, but I'll always miss Eddie. Eddie's probably the most like Wally than anybody. Just yeah. so, um, like you, right? He's most like you, gri right? Grizzled and just yeah. playing the guitar all day long. <laughs> Just chilling with my flip flops and shorts, you know that's that's me, and that's Eddie. <laughs> and Lisa, where do you sit with it? Did you love the Eddie main part, or were you like, I just want to get back to Olivia and then I, I I'm kind of over this at this point. Oh, no, 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 no. And 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 also, I, I I keep saying it was so much fun to watch Ned and how much I watched Molly, how much he was enjoying this, and and to play to play a different dynamic with a different person. I mean, you know, so yeah, sometimes stop it, stop it. Little bit of you know hand wringing <laughs> goes a long way sometimes and and, and I wanted to try to give got to try to give different levels to the to the to the type of worry that you are as the story progresses but it's really nice to if you don't have any drama on a soap opera you don't have a story so you got to be like you said like like a shark not to, to keep up the sea analogy you got to keep swimming forward so I I love just having drama to play and watching you have fun as a different character was really delightful I, I enjoyed all of it was there a lot of, uh, did you feel a lot of weight, you guys, going into the scenes that were going to be shot in the water that you knew these were the key scenes that would bring Ned back? Did you feel like, I got to get this right? Or was there that kind of feeling about it? Or how are we going to get through this swimming thing? <laughs> well, the jumping in the water, it's, you, you, I mean, the, the idea of like actually acting underwater, the, the jokes that I've been getting, I mean, you can't, because you have to swim and your eyes are open and you can't see and you have to not drown or like breathe in through your nose accidentally. So I have to just apologize to everybody because like the director is calling in, like, are you swimming? You're swimming, you're straight. You see him, he is unconscious. His foot is stuck. Oh no. And and everyone saw it. I, I literally went like this, like underwater as I'm swimming. And in my brain, just so everyone knows, I'm like, what? What, what did you do? But like, in your instinct, like you're not talking. So you're kind of like a mime in a comic book. And you're like, okay, I get it that this panel of the comic book is supposed to be telling the audience something bad happened. Like they don't know his foot is stuck and he's unconscious. I've got to go like, oh, Olivia is worried that he's going to drown. And what my instinct I just came out of, no, I went, and, and then and I went, oh, why did you, what did you do? But then it's, too late. So whatever. I did it. I did Lisa, it. I did it. And it's done. Lisa, Everyone's making Lisa, fun of me. Lisa, you are forgiven. We are all <laughs> guilty of overacting at one time or another. <laughs> Stupid choice. Yeah. It whatever, was a little, it. it was, it was, it was a little, it was a little too much. But once again, you, you're forgiven. You I was underwater. You were under, you were drowning. I was underwater trying not to drown. You were drowning. Yeah, exactly. You're, it happens. I'm underwater. Sometimes. Overacting if anyone happens. else is a better Everywhere. actor underwater, I'd like to see him. If you think you could do better underwater acting, I'm happy to there you go. see it. If you can do better underwater, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> let me overacting let me know. overacting right. is acting just the same. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, like, anyway. What about, what about you going into the scene? You're going to jump in. You know he's confused. He's trying to figure out the song and find the siren and going in there. And then I actually... I thought it was really emotional when you came out of the water and she saved you. And it was so touching. I just loved both of your reactions to each other. It was so touching. I really thought it was great. That's all I've said. Well, thank you. That was the part that I wanted to land. I mean, that's- Landed it. You know, that was this, that was it. Those scenes right there. And there was a little bit of poetry in them. And, and I don't normally like 
demand a second or a third take, but I was like, we got I got to get this right. I kept screwing up the words and I knew that the way it was written, you know, we're using the, the song and it was very clear, very specific. And I just couldn't, with all the emotion that I was feeling, I had a hard time just uploading that dialogue and I wanted to make sure we got it right. And I feel like we did when I watched it today, I felt like it ma it made emotional sense, which is what most importantly, but I also needed to say those words and, you know, about the song, <laughs> which is very poetic. I mean, you know I mean? I'm, I just, I, you know, so to bring that forward, I want to make sure I sold that and, and uh, not sold it, but you know, yeah, I was living it. I wanted to make sure that I was living it. And, and, uh, and I watched so it today, and I thought, I thought we did. Yeah. Well, at, at the end of the day, when 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 it all came, when they're there, and she saves him, and she gives him CPR, and he comes to, <laughs> you know, it, at the end of the day, it's a few. Like, a few. It's a, I, I like I liked how at least I liked a few little swats on the, my back. It was just kind of like it didn't look as on. hard as I really hit you. It looked no, like it I was tapping you, but I was hitting you really hard. It was it was looked like you were hitting me, like wake up, wake up. Instead of like trying to resuscitate me, <laughs> I, I was hitting you super hard, and it kind of looked like I, yeah, like I was tapping you to wake up. I was hitting you hard. <laughs> did, but that's another like thing. Like, you, don't, you don't know what it's gonna look like. I was hitting him very, very hard, and <laughs> it didn't look like I was hitting him. Very hard. <laughs> you could have well, hit me harder. Maybe I want to hurt you, but I was hitting you as hard as it seemed was acceptable. <laughs> you hit him hard and you got you I hit him pretty hard you hit him really hard <laughs> and you resuscitated Ned Eddie and wasn't at the end of the day the connection between Olivia and Ned it's it was their love story right it kind of like he brought her she brought him back correct mm -hmm. is that how we should see this right literally and figuratively <laughs> yes under the under yes. the water under the water Frank told me right before I get my foot caught in the net and I see her and it was underwater. And they said that that's when you just before, actually just <laughs> before you go unconscious, just before I was going to lose consciousness, I realize it's Olivia and she's coming to save me. So I played that. I probably was guilty of some overacting right there. Cause I remember, right. I remember looking at it. It was like, yeah, I, I totally did the expression. Like, and then you went. The siren and I went. The sea is in front of me. Yes. So we're all, you know, we. we <laughs> and again, as as we said, we heard the director say, "You see her. You're going unconscious." You know, so you kind of knew what what we were playing. But I kind of needed that. It was nice to hear uh, that this is the moment where I rec recognize who it is and where I am, and that I'm Ned. In fact, that's what. Frank said, that's when you realize you're Ned. You, you remember who you are. And I needed to know that was the moment, you know, for me. I needed, I, it was good to have a specific moment that I could, that's when it clicks. Right. Did that make sense to you, the click? Because it was, yes. how were they getting? Yes, I at? think so. I think, I think it was, I think he needed a click. And I wanted to know when underwater that would be. And of course, it was right before you go unconscious. <laughs> but it was right before I, you know, died. Pretty much right, and she brought me back yeah. to life. She, you, you, you gave me mouth to mouth life. resuscitation. You. Yes, you I breathed, did. I really, you breathed as, life back into me. As much as I maybe didn't hit you hard enough on the back, I definitely breathed into your mouth, very because you could be like, just bring me back to life. All right. <laughs> now, in, yes. the, funeral. in the behind the scenes <laughs> video that ABC had shot, General Hustle shot that they put out on social media. I, I guess you guys are both swimmers in real life. So this was no big whoop for you to like go in the water, right? Oh, no. Yeah, we both know how to swim. You swim all the time. I'm a scuba diver. I mean, I, I, yeah. So, so they, they found the right people to do it. In other words, it would have been worse if they were like, uh, we're putting you in the water and- uh, can't swim. Can't swim. Now that's true. I had lunch with the, uh, with the two divers and I just happened to just, they were there and I sat down and we had a nice little lunch. And the first thing he said was like, boy, it sure is nice to, to work with you guys who feel, you guys obviously feel really comfortable in the water. And it's a completely different story when, you know, it could have been the other way. So I didn't realize that how, yeah, how lucky he was. We were because, yeah, I'm very comfortable in water and so is she. So we, they lucked out there. 
Yeah, it's different without a scuba tank on. We actually had to put weights in my pockets to drag me down because once, you know, when you're holding your breath, you're buoyant. So so we had to weight me down, which then makes it a little hard to get up at the end. But whatever, we did it. We did it. We did it. In fact, there were times when I had to be down at the bottom of the tank to make it look like I was deep. And I said, hold on a second. I'm going to go down below. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go down. I'm going to blow all of my air out. I know that when you blow all your air out, that's when you can sink and stay down at the bottom. Yeah. And they did, and they waited. So I think they got some nice shots of me yeah. when I all the air is out of my body, and it doesn't look like I'm, st I'm, you know, I'm down there holding my breath. And uh, I thought some of those shots actually looked pretty good. The camera work was great. I mean, I was shocked. Oh, I mean, honestly, really, we're, really really, uh, we're we're swimming around in a tank, right, Lisa? That's maybe fifteen feet in diameter. So what was the right. 15 I'm to 20 feet? Sounds about right. And it's very you have, warm. You have and one or two strokes. You have one or two strokes and then you are at the wall, you know. So <laughs> they did, it was amazing to make it look like we actually were swimming around. And was, the upshot where I come up gasping for air that it kind of looks like I might be in a in a lake yeah. or something. You know, without me too. I, I, I'm glad they got, one of, they got one of me too coming up for air. I... I had forgotten that I, I they did one of those, which I think is really important. I mean, I can hold my breath a long time, but you know, I basically we were holding our breath for an entire episode. Right. <laughs> now, entire episode of General Hospital. <laughs> so the rationale that Ned had for the reason he was Eddie was he going through a PTSD issue? Like, yeah. What, exactly. How do you? I, I, I would a, yeah. a PTSD. Uh, sort of a hypnotic state. He he would he definitely flipped because of the brain, you know, shock. And then I think he kind of, yeah, not so much hypnosis, but probably PTSD, where he just chose to go into a place that's a happy place <laughs> instead <laughs> of the place that he was at. I think, you know, I think all the stuff that was happening at ELQ, and I think he just kind of, you know, you went off and went, well, this is a lot better place. I like it. I like it here better than my real life. That's how I kind of looked at it, you know. Yeah, like a midlife crisis. Come was like a midlife crisis. Was a midlife crisis, of course, and it happened at a key point when, of course, he knew that Nina was the person that pointed Carly and Drew the SEC. And on today's episode, he remembers that, and he and says to Olivia, like, you know, I want to clear my name because Ned was. People were blaming Ned originally as the person yeah. who turned Carly and Drew, pointed them to insider trading with the SEC. But Olivia convinces him. She basically is like, let's leave it alone for now. Everybody's in a good place. I'm going to take so much crap for that. I'm going to take are. so much crap for that. I'm just, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm if I read the board, if I still read the boards, I know that I would be taking a turn like, how, oh, what dumb? Anyway, but <laughs> so it's, it's so good. You got, she would probably do that. Right. She was convincing yeah. that please don't rock the boat right now. And he goes, okay, for now. Come on, Ned. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, sure enough, he uses that information for his own good over the over at the corporate headquarters. You know, right. he was able to use that le as leverage. So, you know, I don't think Ned thought that it was like, you know, eventually he'll clear his name. He, it's not like he's running around worried about his reputation. No, I mean, he did just come back from the from thinking he was Eddie Mayne, the rock star for the last six or seven months. So when it comes to, to defending his reputation, is just not high on his list right now. <laughs> there, there was also a really touching scene today. So Ned comes. They've made love. They've had sex. Olivia and Ned. He comes. Made love. I like that one. Made, made love. love. Make love. <laughs> they made love. Sweet, sweet love. I'm like five years old. It always drives me nuts. <laughs> sweet love. Sweet love. They made love. It's love. Sweet love. And then he's all dressed up now, like in, as corporate Ned, and he sees Lois and his daughter, Brooklyn, for the first time as Ned. And he really was very, um, it was very emotional, a little moment between Amanda and Ned, Wally and Brooklyn. Do you remember doing that? Oh, of course. I thought you were going to, the way you set that up, I, was, I thought you were going we to watch it. <laughs> like, wow. No. He, he, he's got a clip he's going to throw. I wish there. I had a clip because it happened today. But yes, it was really touching. You, I, How is that it working with Amanda? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love working with Amanda. Well, what was tricky about so that great. scene is that we actually taped that scene before we did all the water stuff. 
which is uh, why so someone caught me. So someone caught me because they said, I think somehow Eddie got a shave while he was in the water or something caught me about that because we actually did those scenes. We don't do that very often. Our production schedule usually keeps it pretty linear. So that was a little tricky, but I love working with Amanda. And I had to tell the story of being having a near death experience and tell the whole story about the water before I'd actually done the water. So I had to use my imagination. <laughs> I don't know how it played, but it was, uh, you know, it's fun. I, I enjoy working with, with Rena again in the lowest story because she was part of that. You know, she's the one who talks Eddie into going to the, basically take a, take a leap of faith in the lake, in the, in the lake. It was the leap of faith in the lowest side. Right. So is, is, Somehow that somehow that seems sensible to Eddie, and and he did it. <laughs> so is Olivia threatened by Lois? Well, Tracy keeps trying to tell her to be. She of her own volition, she's not, and she's genuinely happy to have her friend back, and they love each other. Um, I think Tracy kind of whispering in her ear all that stuff. She's she's sort of starting to think like, well, am I am I crazy? I mean, maybe there is something to worry about. And and and, and I'm not sure if this has come out yet. Like it is true, it's a weird thing that we have, as as hypothetically best friends have never discussed it. Like, oh right, my best friend, you married my ex husband, is a weird thing. So we are gonna get to a place where that gets dealt with, which which it would. So it's both dramatic and realistic. And it's always nice when something is both dramatic and realistic. And it's just, it's, it's so, they, they have dramatized it beautifully in some of the scenes that we have not yet shot. Um, and it's so much fun to, to, to work with Rena. And she's so passionate about this new character and uh, not new character, but this new revisitation to this character. And I, and, and, and it's inspiring me again, like, I've been playing Olivia now for so long. It's like, yeah, you sure? You know, I'm like going to wear this. It's, as you see on your rack, like a blue sweater and some pants. But I can tell that she's she's all like, what would her hair be like today? Got it what down would her hair be like today? Yeah. This is what she'd be wearing today. I'd be wearing this thing and a thing and a thing. And I, I'm like, oh, right. I remember. Like in the beginning, you're like very sort of protective of every look and every hairstyle and everything. And it's very, and it's, and it's energizing. It's very, it's very energizing to, to go through that with her. She's full of energy and she's really fun. Great to work with. Yeah, Wally, there was, I think I had commented on social media, there was a beautiful montage they had encapsulated um, Ned and Lois's relationship. Oh. They had done it. It was so well done. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I remember you and I uh, commenting on it on social media. It was just so well done. I, it was like, oh, OG. You know, it's like the OG Ned Lois. Yeah. Like, it was, it really better. was. I agreed with you. It was brilliant. In fact, I've never done this before, but I actually emailed. Frank and all the producers and said, please, this was amazing. You encapsulated all the drama, the romance, the humor, and all the high points of the entire three year relationship in a way that was really, I was just, I mean, that's hard to do. And and uh, one of the directors or one of the producers called back and said, yeah, I was, you know, I was the one and, and, and had, along with an editor, which I haven't, I wish I'd like to meet that editor and say and tell her because they had a, they went into the archives. That's not easy to grab all that stuff. So no, it's not. Anyway, yeah. I agree. It was really, it was really great. Yeah. And now, what is, what does Ned feel for Lois at this point? He's aware of how instrumental she was in helping him return to himself because she understood the music block problem. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's. You know. He's. You know. I. I think he's sort of happy. He's, you know, he, he's not, you know, there, there's no feeling of getting back together with her. So for him, he's like, I'm look, it's nice for him, his daughter, Amanda, or uh, Brooklyn to be there for. But I mean, I don't really give her all the credit. In fact, we talk about it in the scenes where, yeah, she told me to go jump in the lake, but it was you, you know, that came and saved me. So I don't think he feels anything like he owes her or anything like that. But, um, yeah, and we talk about that today, I think, right? That, you know, that I did sort of need that suggestion to confuse me just enough to go <laughs> take, take a jump in the lake. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So did you enjoy getting the times, you did? You got to sing a lot for the last while on the show, which was so nice. They actually let you sing or you'd be like mm -hmm. working on a song or you'd be doing a, a, a performance or it mm -hmm. was nice to get to see you do that. I think it was a great way to incorporate that 
great aspect of your talent. Um, how did you did you enjoy all that? I'm assuming that was I did. I did. And it was fun that Fido, one of our directors, is also a songwriter. And uh, and he wrote this song and and uh, and we, you know, we sort of sort of taught Jimmy and, and it was it was really a cool song and it was played out and maybe became part of the plot to the story. So that was fun to work with Fido in a different way than just being the director. And then it was really fun to do the very last song, which came from 30 years ago that we, we sang on the show All the Man which was such a fun, I was really the only song I ever sang live to an audience, the entire storyline <laughs> uh, from, from beginning to end. So it was fun to sing this song that I always thought was an underrated song of Kirk and Taylor and uh, one of our own. And, uh, and it was really fun to get a great response from the audience. They, they, they really thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and so that was cool to sing one of our own songs at the end that story. Um, yeah, no. So, I mean, I always enjoy singing and 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 doing that. It's just a different, you know. I, it's hard. I mean, I, again, you, you know, it can be, it can, it can get look a little cheesy, you know. So we, I do my best to try to uncheese it, pasteurize it as much as I can. <laughs> Lisa, why do you? And think I, and it's still, I'm still like, you know, the, the line's like he thinks he's a rock star. He thinks his name's Eddie Main. He's a rock star. I'm over there busking away playing my guitar. <laughs> anyway, I do my best. <laughs> so why do you think Olivia and Ned have stood the test of time and have endured? Because they've gone through their ups and downs. But what is it about them that you think works so well? And it works. The audience loves them. I mean, they want to root for Olivia and Ned. I mean, I... I... I, it, it is funny for you to, to to talk about it that way because it it still seems to me like we're a new relationship. But I but if you do the math on it, we're really not. You know what I mean? Like we've been we're 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 now we've been together in soap opera years for like a very long time, time. <laughs> a very long time. And we do keep keep. Um, I mean, obviously because they love each other. That's that's the main the main thing. They really do love each other. Um, uh, and they, and they and they do they evolve a bit. I mean, they're willing to make sacrifices for one another. It seems, and 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 uh, hold opposing opinions for the other one, which is important in in relationships. I mean, I I think I I, I hope I, if what you're saying is true that the, that the chemistry is there that the that the audience likes to likes to see then that that would that would honestly probably be the biggest reason that we're still together if the well, audience is like. Well, Barbara in the chat says Olivia Netto, the Edward and Lila now. That's nice. I mean, I, I think, think that I think they respect one another too. Yes, I think they respect each other. I think they respect each other's differences. Yes. I mean, I think it's harder for Olivia to accept, accept some of the quarter main traits, but she does. You know, when push comes to shove, she's there for him. And uh, I mean, you know, there's not that much about Olivia that. Ned would have to like accept, but you know, a little woo -woo, you know, no, she's a, she's a little, she's a little, um, woo she, and she, she's a little, she can be, a, she can be a little emotional, a little emotional, a little emotional. Yeah. She's, she's, she's dramatic, over emotional and she can, be a little bit she can be a little dramatic. Yeah. 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 Uh, there, there, Kathy is saying it's nice to have a mature, loving, respectful relationship. Oh, respectful you, relationship? Yes. David yeah. said, "I got good for Olivia when she wakes up in the morning and even yawns. He would root for you." No did matter. I do that today? Oh, did... did I wake up this morning and yawn on the show or something? Did I do that, or no. is he making it? Uh, no. Is he making that up? I don't get it. <laughs> no, no. I do wake up in the morning and yawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Mary Beth is asking about what's it like working with Jane Elliott. Um, Lisa, you're terrific in scenes with her, truly sweet and funny. Uh, Lisa, why don't you take it and then Wally? She is she is one of my honestly closest friends in real life. So having her back on a regular basis is like the cherry on top of a Sunday. Um, I love working with her. It's what allows us to have that sort of um sort of hopefully amusingly kind of hostile uh banter. She's so funny. She's 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 just I love I love working with her. I love it. 
such a such a pro, so much talent, and and we love each other in real life. So it's it's really great. Does she it's like really Wally? Great. Does Jane like Wally? I believe she does very much so. <laughs> That's what she tells me anyway. She tells me that she loves Wally. And they've known each other forever. I mean, they have legitimate like friend history even before me. So I mean, on other shows I together. Know, like, I know Jane loves me, but she doesn't always show it, you know. Jane does she's not like gushing every time she's not she a sees gusher. Me. Right. She'll just kind of look at me like, I mean, she'll say hello and nice to see you and all that stuff. And then it's like, we're running lines, okay? Things like that. She gets right down to business. Well, I've known yeah. her since 88, right? I've known her since my second, first year, my first year. I think my first year in Days of Our Lives. I think she came in 87, 88. I mean, I graduated. I've, known her, I've known her forever. And we've gone through a lot together. I mean, heck, she's been around for my, every one of my marriages. <laughs> It's she together, came, she, she said. She, she came, I think she came to two of them, or at least one of them. Anyway, oh. um, but she just, we've known each other forever. We've seen their, I've seen her kids grow. She's seen my kids grow up. Has she ever um, pulled you aside and said, let me give you a bit of advice on, has she ever given anybody active? Oh, no, no. She, she does. She does. Because yeah. she, she knows that I would take it. And, uh, and, uh, Oh yeah, no, she's giving me some good, and and it's just because she does come from kind of a producer, and she's a and she's an acting coach. No, she's giving me some really beautiful nuggets over the years, mm -hmm. and not a lot. What about like, Leo? Leo, and now will we see more about Leo? Will the autism be played a little more? Will Ned? Ned is going to have. We haven't seen Ned uh, see Leo again since he's now Ned. We haven't seen any of that. Do you think we will see? Um, that's coming, yeah. There is some of that. Is, some seats with is it, there is some of that coming? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know anything. I don't. I don't get the sense that they're going to play out more of his of his um, autism being an an issue too much. I I, mean, I don't think that that's going to be a big point of drama anytime soon. Um, I think we're all. I think we all get along very well. I think they seem to be managing it very well. Certainly, as billionaires, that can oh, yeah. <laughs> make it a lot, a lot easier. To handle things when you're billionaires, I think would be nice, you know. So, Does are, they, are the quartermains are the quartermains billionaires? Of I course guess they like, are. Must be a really? nice set. <laughs> they're you billionaires. About that. You don't think they're okay. billionaires? You think they're millionaires? I, mean, I was thinking, I, I thinking hundreds of millions, but I guess you're right. They're this day and age, billionaires. <laughs> billionaires. So is Ned. Well, yeah. So Ned and Michael, I can see there's going to be problems here. He's, he, you know, there's Ned, Michael, Drew. There's like, who's going to be in charge of ELQ? Do you like when Ned gets into business mode? Is that interesting to play? Or are you like, I'd rather be doing music with Eddie Main? <laughs> well, what I do like is that, and I think sometimes they, 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 I don't know why, but he is Tracy's son. And he is Lord Ashton's son, who was a grifter. So I'm glad they're finally giving me some stuff where I'm, you know, capable of not thinking twice to blackmail somebody <laughs> or to do something duplicitous. I mean, that's, and I, and I hope sometimes they lose sight of that. And, you know, I'm a nice guy and, and it's like, so it's, I like it when I'm doing something that's a little more mischief, mischievous. And, and I think that's who Ned is. And, you know, and, and that's one of the things that she has to learn to accept about me. Well, that's, I'm not the only character that a woman has to learn to accept there you know, their career and who they are. Sort of like a Good theme point. on our show. Would there a theme be, on our show. Right. And there was a breaking point. You guys did bust up for a while. What, what, would, Olivia, what would be Olivia's breaking point with Ned? Like, what would she not forever forgive him for? Because she has forgiven him before. Wait, that's a good that's a good question. I suspect if he really had it, cheated on her again, she might be done. Yeah, that'd be bad. That happened. Yeah. Probably, I guess if you slept with yeah. Lois, that'd be kind of a deal breaker. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably. I'm trying to think of what the what what would be something that she really she could not tolerate because she she understands how much he loves the company and how much of a deal and 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 that you know also that's why they're billionaires. I often say like, listen, lady, he's got to work hard. They're billionaires, so shut your shut your pie hole and let him go to work but, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but exactly. do you like the enormous mansion you're living in let the man go to work 
Um, 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 but 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 I think the, the only thing that would really drive her away from him would be some sort of emotional betrayal, I would think. Some sort of uh, an emotional betrayal or or doing something, I don't know, so so out of integrity that she could not feel like she could trust him in the future as a good person or something. I don't know. It would be, I can't think of what it would be. So that would be for the writers. If they, if they, if they want to take us apart, they're going to have to think of something so really good. If he was to blow Nina sky high, would she be okay? What do you think would happen? Would she? Ultimately she'd have to forgive him for that. Because he wouldn't do it without good reason. That's the other thing. He wouldn't do it without good reason, I think. You mean if he just like stepped on and was like, she did it, I, it wasn't me, and blah, blah, blah. Like, would she ever forgive him? I think of course she would. Of she course would. Would. She would. We'd have a lot of great scenes where we fought about it. But all eventually, I'm doing is, she would. all I was doing would be telling the truth. I mean, it's not like, of course she would forgive me. Like, okay, the guy can't keep a secret, but okay, oh well. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm telling the truth. Well, and Olivia that already takes a lot of heat for not telling the truth about certain things in the past. Yeah. So I know. So, so Sonny people... loses the love of his life. Oh well, it's not the first <laughs> time Sonny loses the love of his life. <laughs> what, like, the thirty-seventh love of his life has been lost. Yeah. Oh life. well. Oh well. We got. And I was number Sonny. one. So I mean, or two, <laughs> depending on who you ask. You were one in six. You were one. one, in I, was six. one That's it. I was two. like one in two. Yeah. I mean, did you ever think, Wally, when you look back, I'm sure, did you think you must be pinching yourself with the longevity you've had in this role and another role and another show? I mean, it's crazy. Like, you're the only guy I know that has these on. Right? I don't know. And I've covered the shows for 40 years. You're the guy. In this, in this hardest working man in daytime. Hardest working man in daytime. Don't, don't, but don't tell anybody. I swear. There's a part of me that just doesn't want to even publicize it, so they don't ever know. I mean, I know they know. And uh, you know, it's it's Ron and Frank understand. You know, and they they worked with me before, and and you know, I, I think and Ken and everybody on both shows, you know, like me and respect me enough, and I and I and I respect them, and I. I don't come to work not knowing my lines and, and I'm, I show up and these are two legacy characters and I'm sure they think in the long run, it's not hurting the show. And for me, it's fantastic. I love it. I love it. I just love it. I mean, it's how lucky, how lucky am I? I mean, I just thought it was and, great uh, to have this run that they just did with the Eddie main thing. Um, there's Emmy material there. Don't forget for next year. Okay. okay. Mm. My is all going to be underwater. It's going to be all <laughs> just me and water. Water. Yeah, I That's don't know. Favorite. I mean, I, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Michael. But yeah. Um. So I'm just lucky. I feel so lucky playing both roles. It's just great. And in fact, honestly, I have to thank the audience because I they think love you. they're here with us, and they are just saying how much they love the two of you. And of course, Wally's singing. And Olivia's friends with Carly, not Nina. I mean, they're getting very like you know they're standing up for these characters, and and that's what they do because they've invested in you guys for so long. You know, they they're rooting for you. It's true. Well, she's not standing up for Nina so much as she's standing up for Sunny. Just so we're clear on that. Let's clear that. <laughs> I want to clear that clear the air right now. She wants Sunny to not have his heart broken. Carly's happy. She's getting along with Nina, and she doesn't want Sonny to get his heart broken. Let's make that very yeah. clear. Right, but I see Ned. And, I, I, and how about her husband, who feels like a rat? And he's like, and people look at him like he's a rat. You don't care about that. That his reputation as someone who's like with integrity, and instead of the guy who like I love you who you are. <laughs> I, she loves who he is. <laughs> Angie says we are truly blessed to see this brilliantly talented Wally gracing our screens. Angela says, Wally is a gentleman and hard worker. Love you both. Bonnie says, appreciate you both and what you bring to the roles. And Angie says, screw Sonny's feelings. <laughs> exactly. I, I told you I was going to get my ass handed to me with this whole Hildy thing. Says, I told you. Says, love I, Wally. Yeah, I this <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you all for coming. Script, I was like, 
they will hand me my ass for this. No question about it. I'm just going to have to figure out a way to try to make that work. But everyone gets their ass handed to them at some point on the show or else you're not on soap opera. Wait, so Wally, you, know. you like the Hordermain ELQ business part of the role? You do like that part? I do like that, yeah. It yeah. Doesn't, you don't feel like it's stuffy or you like the corporate? Well, we've, we've done it a lot, fighting for ELQ and the CEO stuff and all that. I mean, when I started 30 years ago, remember? That was my first, Paul Satterfield, Paul Hornsby. Paul Hornsby. And all of that. And I was going after Luke was in there, too. I mean, I remember my first scenes were in that big old boardroom. And me fighting for control of ELQ. So here we are, still doing it. <laughs> but it's not, you know, Edward. It's not, uh, you know, Paul Hornsby here. And it's it just, but I'm still doing it. So on that side of it, it would be, you know, I've done it. I feel like I, you know, how many times can I do this? But I still like, you know, being the corporate guy. I think that's, I think that's, the show kind of needs that guy. And so I'm happy to, to you know, to fill that role. Is Olivia consider herself one of the, this is a question, is Olivia one of the best cooks? Is she one a really good cook? People oh my are, God, yes. There's no question about the that. Cook and, like she's right up there with, should oh, she yeah. have a show? She could have her own show. She could open a restaurant for sure. She's a, she is a legitimate, people ask me if I'm as good a cook as Olivia, not even, not even in the ballpark and a real cook. She could, she could just find all the stuff in your, in your refrigerator and make it without a recipe into something spectacular. She's that kind of cook. She's iron chef level. Yes. Iron chef. <laughs> yes. I believe she's iron chef she be, so she goes on a reality show and Ned gets jealous and she becomes big and famous. And there you go. Yes. The Italian Rachel Ray is what she becomes. Italian and Rachel Ray. I love it. I am well we have a TV for... we have a we have a TV studio in town so maybe you should be pitching your new show is... to the producers over there. It's very true yeah. and we could really put recipes on. I could I could fake it enough to actually make a thing on on TV. Well oh my god we'd be like soupy sales and soupy. each like she actually makes a recipe that you make yourself. Be like everyone make oh. Olivia's pasta fajol. Uh <laughs> Are you performing, Wally? People are asking are any live dates coming up. Nope, we don't. The day players are going to be mm, dormant for the next three months. So I think we are in Florida at the end of February with probably half a third, maybe a third to half of a new show. So okay. we got new songs coming. So we've done our first year, had a blast, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the song selection is sort of unlimited. So we should actually do a fan survey. Like, who wants to, what do you want to hear? You Have should. You should do a fan thing online, see what the choices are, and then- Interactive. Interactive, interactive set list. There you go. <clears throat> That's good. People are saying uh, real quickly that they loved the behind the scenes water rescue. Amazing. Thought they thought right. it was- Yeah. You'll awesome. never forget Thank this. You. Career. This is a, the water rescue will be in your arsenal. Yes. Here. Forever. Yes, it will. Yes. All right. In a quick tease before we wrap, what can viewers look forward to coming up? More of the drama here of will he? Well, it's holiday season, so there's a lot of family, good family stuff. But at the quarter maze, of course, the family stuff and holidays, there's always drama involved as well. I think you guys know that Ellen Travolta is, is coming. You yes. can say well, that. Gloria. Yep. It was great. And she brings a bit of drama uh, to the quarter main Thanksgiving table. Um, as you might be able to imagine, but you won't be able to imagine it entirely. Um, she's great, and that's that's some really good fun stuff. And then we have another special guest coming for Christmas that I think you'll be very interested in, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say who that is. Special guest, let us know who you think. Yes, <laughs> and and we are around for New Year's, which is great. Our characters are um, heavily oh, in yeah. the plot of uh, of New Year's, so yeah. That, oh, I got a very New sexy year. dress for New Year's. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so very, we'll be very here. sexy dress. Sexy she dress. may You'll actually be, be threatened by Lois because she puts on a very, very sexy dress for New Year's. So uh, you'll be seeing Niv. Not. You'll be seeing Niv through the holidays. Niv through the holidays. All right, guys, thank you so much. I just want to again both commend you. I really thought the performances were so wonderful. I, I uh, the other day, I just thought it was. I was like very moved of how oh. it came around to the two of them reconnecting and him getting his memory back and him just looking at her and remembering. And it played just beautifully. And I just want to tell you, it was, it was great. 
It was really great. Thank and, you very and much. I watched Michael. a lot of stuff, that. and I'm I didn't think I it was, you and I didn't think it was cheesy. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm into this. Uh, all right, have sure. a wonderful, Thank wonderful you. holiday season. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Wally. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you here. Bye, bye, everybody. Yep, yeah. yeah. and we'll be back next week, next um, Monday, with Haley Aaron of the Young and the Restless, formerly of General Hospital. All right, guys. Oh. Thank you.